I'm Steph, and today I'm doing a trial run of all the most iconic looks from the 70s. I'm still trying to crack my personal style, so I'm looking to the 1970s to see if I can find any inspiration. And since I don't even know where to begin, I've brought in fashion historian Sarah Idakavich to help me out. Thanks, Steph. The 1970s are one of my favorite periods because it really provided people with the freedom to wear what they wanted. Are you ready to get started? I'm ready. First up, 70s casual. In the 1970s, an overall shift to casual wear signified a desire for comfort and a need to break from the formality of the previous generations. Dress codes relaxed significantly, and women began wearing pants in greater numbers than they ever did before. With less defined gender lines in the 1970s, more and more men and women chose to wear denim. So for the first look, I'm starting you off with a pair of flared hip-hugging jeans. It's always a good sign when we start with pants. Mm -hmm. Pairing that with a knit top will help to demonstrate how the spread of youth culture in the 1960s led to more comfortable and casual styles in the 1970s. Many women even opted to go braless. Yes, let my girls free. To add a little bling, we've got a classic pair of gold hoop earrings and some super groovy shades. And finally, you'll be ready to go after you put on this pair of retro roller skates, which are equal parts stylish and functional. I'm very happy that I have insurance. Are you ready to roll? For makeup, we're gonna be keeping things pretty natural with a healthy glow that's reminiscent of the all-American supermodel, Lauren Hutton. Your natural beauty will be enhanced with a little rosy lip gloss and some classic water-based mascara, which was a huge game changer when it debuted in 1971 because of its easy to remove formula. For hair, we're going with the long feathered style that was popularized by 70s icon Farrah Fawcett. The so-called Farrah hairstyle is defined by big waves, long layers, and of course, the side wings that young girls work so hard to perfect across the globe. Wow, so this is considered the casual look, which is crazy, uh, but I actually really like it. To be honest, I've literally never worn skates before in my entire life, but I feel like the only way to test out this look is to just go for it. died like six times. I actually am pretty good at skating. Well, I was a little bit nervous that my flare pants were gonna get stuck in the skates, but it ended up being fine and they were actually super comfortable. The hair looks awesome, but it is pretty big and got in my face a little bit when I was doing crazy skate moves. <laughs> my lips are super shiny and it reminds me of the Smackers lip gloss that I used to wear back in middle school. So I feel like I look kind of young. The mascara, it's not too heavy, it's not too light, like it's not clumping. I feel good about it. I like these earrings, but you can't really see them under all this hair. The shirt is very vibrant. However, it is super hot because it is a sweater and it did not do well when I was skating for that exact reason. I know I said I was gonna let my boobs free, but it was a pretty athletic activity, so I opted for the bra in the end. So I'm sad that I have to toss in my skates, but I'm excited to see what the next look is. Next up, it wouldn't be 70s without disco. Yes. Towards the end of the 1970s, the film Saturday Night Fever helped to fuel the craze of disco music, which began to really emerge in mainstream fashion and culture. Disco encouraged people to experiment and express themselves through what they wore, and fashion designers like Halston and Stephen Burroughs provided women with sleek clothing that allowed for easy movement and all-night dancing at clubs like Studio 54. For this look, I have chosen a sleek, form-fitting red jumpsuit for you, because the point of any disco look is to show off your body while you're showing off your moves on the dance floor. We also have some coordinating strappy heels for the same effect. For jewelry, you're gonna be channeling Cher's Bob Mackie costumes through a plethora of shining pieces that will help to reflect light and bring attention to you as you strut around the club. Are you ready to boogie? I think I was born ready for this. Mm -hmm.
makeup in the disco scene, women were not afraid to be daring, especially before a night of long, sweaty dancing. For your eyes, we're going to accentuate them with shimmery eyeshadow, dark eyeliner, and long lashes in the style of Diana Ross and Liza Minnelli. For your lips, we're keeping with the more is more approach by incorporating big, cherry red, glossy lips that will complement your smoking hot jumpsuit. And finally, for your hair, we're giving you a look that is reminiscent of the long, luxurious locks of Cher, Jerry Hall, and Donna Summer, which should help you feel like a real disco diva. Get the casting director of Mamma Mia on the phone right now. I look like a dancing queen. This look is super bold and I'm very excited to test it out. It's not really disco without a disco ball, so I made my producer Jeff run out to get one. Time to get groovy. <laughs> Okay, so I think I was born in the wrong decade. 1970s disco, totally my party vibe. And the dress looked awesome while I was dancing. This jumpsuit is very loose fitting and it makes doing crazy disco moves that much easier. I have to say I would never dye my hair this dark or wear it this long. It gets a little too heavy. However, it looked really cool when I was doing spins. I can't tell if I look more like Cher or Morticia from Adam's Family. Either or, they're both badasses. I actually have red lipstick like this, so I'd be down to wear this if I was going out with my friends. I don't think I would wear this much makeup if I was gonna be dancing all night long, but I did kind of feel like the star of the show. I feel like I've already learned so much about the 70s today, but it's time for me to go home. I'm excited to come back tomorrow morning. Welcome back. Are you ready to get started again? Let's go. So today's first look is the bohemian look. In the early 1970s, there was an impetus to go back to nature with a huge resurgence of arts and crafts in both everyday and high-end fashion that helped to prolong the hippie aesthetic of the 1960s. Combining a nostalgia for the past and non-Western elements, the result was an eclectic look that celebrated freedom and comfort, which eventually culminated in the so-called gypsy or peasant chic look made famous by designers such as Aussie Clark, Bill Gibb, and Yves Saint Laurent. The free-flowing bohemian look is best represented by the female rock and folk singers of the time, such as Carly Simon, Stevie Nicks, Carole King, and Joni Mitchell. First and foremost, you'll be wearing a dress by Thea Porter, who was a British fashion designer in the 1970s who was known for infusing Western fashion with Middle Eastern aesthetics through the use of loose shapes and exotic textiles. The dress is going to be worn with this tie-dye vest, which represents the homemade countercultural elements that were eventually appropriated by the mainstream fashion industry does not look like this when I tie-dye. Platforms were the shoes of choice for both men and women in the 1970s. So you're gonna be accentuating your long silhouette with this pair of wooden and leather clogs. They literally made out of wood? Oh yeah. For accessories, you're gonna be layering a variety of pieces in earthy tones and materials, as well as a floppy brim tat that's a nod to the one worn by Carly Simon on the cover of her 1972 album, No Secrets. Last but not least, you're gonna be wearing this fringe shawl in the style of the one and only Stevie Nicks. Are you ready? This is a lot of stuff. Fashion magazines in the early 1970s promoted the natural look, which still took some effort to produce. For your eyes, some light eyeliner and mascara will keep things chill. For a fresh, feminine look that's seemingly effortless, we'll accentuate your natural beauty with just a little blush. For your lips, we'll use a neutral lip shade that will give you some color while still looking natural. We'll keep your hair straight and parted down the middle in the style of actress Allie McGraw, who exemplified the youthful, carefree spirit of bohemian fashion. Ooh, I 
I love this. So I already love this look. It's very comfortable. It's casual while also being dramatic. But to really test out the bohemian lifestyle, I think I need to go outside and make art. Dangerous. They're very dangerous. <laughs> so the shoes broke when I was frolicking. Um, and if your clogs can't withstand frolicking in a field, what's even the point of them? Anytime I tried to do anything artistic, my shawl would fall off. It kind of just got in the way. <laughs> I can't do it with the hat. This dress is perfect for running around in a field. It looked so awesome when I was spinning. It was a little bit long though, so I did trip a few times. My tie-dye vest ended up matching my paint palette, so that worked out perfectly. I love how the makeup is subtle and natural. The eyeliner makes my eyes pop, but it's not too dramatic. The lipstick is noticeable, but not too much. It kind of matches my natural color. Overall, this is my favorite look so far because even though it is very dressed up, you kind of look like you didn't try at all. Next up, it's business time. Coinciding with the second wave feminist movement, many young women of the 1970s chose to enter the workforce, and pantsuits quickly became the sartorial symbol of their social and economic freedom. American fashion designers like Anne Klein, Jeffrey Bean, and Calvin Klein provided working women with stylish mix and match separates, while Diane von Furstenberg's iconic jersey wrap dress became an office staple for those who desired simplicity and sex appeal. For this look, you're gonna be wearing a white knit mock turtleneck in the style of Mary Tyler Moore. We'll be pairing that with a double knit polyester pantsuit. And this synthetic fabric was actually a pretty big deal for working women when it first came out because it didn't really wrinkle and it could be machine washed easily without losing its shape or colors. On top of that, we have this bold blazer that could be mixed and matched with countless other items making it a staple in any career woman's closet. To complete the look, you're gonna be wearing this practical pair of pumps, as well as this set of clip-on earrings that can easily be slipped off to make important phone calls. No one makes phone calls anymore. Are you ready to get to work? No, well, it is my day off. We're gonna be keeping your makeup pretty simple because your outfit's already bold as is. For your eyes, we're gonna go with a more neutral looking eyeshadow because we don't wanna to compete too much with the bright colors in your suit. For your lips, we're gonna be using a long lasting terracotta shade to keep you looking fresh from nine to five. For your hair, we're taking inspiration from Sybil Shepherd's chic coiffure seen in Glamour Magazine, which is curled and teased to perfection. Wow. This look is already so big, my hair not moving. I actually do have to finish up a few things for my real job, so maybe I should go do it 70s style. So my crew went out and got me this actual typewriter from the 70s, and I'm gonna try to get some of my actual work done. Full disclosure, I've never used a typewriter before. www.gmail.com. What do I do at work the most? Facebook. It must have been really hard to check your email in the 70s. Oh wait, no, this, isn't this isn't a real phone. 
So I couldn't really get any of my work done because my job relies entirely on the internet. So this suit definitely got me in the mood for some business, but I think it would be a little bit too stuffy for the summer months. I don't usually match my top with my bottom, but I do like the monochrome in this pantsuit. I'm sensing a pattern between some of these looks where the eyes and the lips are very low key, which I like because a more natural look definitely suits me. It normally takes me five minutes to do my hair for work. I don't think I would ever spend this much time getting ready in the morning. Overall, this look is a little bit bolder than how I would normally dress in the office. I think it would draw too much attention to me. The last look is my favorite look, glam rock. The glam rock style subverted traditional gender norms and emphasized performance and artifice through vibrant hair, shimmering makeup, and an array of skin-tight clothing. Although a number of musicians had adopted this provocative style, it's most often associated with music legend David Bowie and his androgynous stage persona, Ziggy Stardust. For this look, I am so excited to have you wear this cheetah print jumpsuit that was once owned by Debbie Harry from the band Blondie. Wait, Blondie actually wore this? Mm -hmm. And although Blondie wasn't really part of the glam rock scene, this jumpsuit still is a great example of those gender-bending kitsch costumes that were the cornerstones of the musical genre. Glam rock was also called glitter rock for a reason, so you're gonna be sparkling head to toe in these dazzling platform shoes and crystal accessories in the style of Elton John. And finally, we're gonna finish the look with a blue feather boa and one dangling crystal earring, which are like the ones that were worn by David Bowie during his Ziggy Stardust era. So these weren't actually David Bowie's? No. Sorry. It's time for the grand finale. Since Bowie had a lasting influence on fashion and beauty, we're gonna try to reproduce some of his most iconic looks through hair and makeup. Since Bowie famously shaved off his eyebrows, we're gonna try to replicate that by covering yours up to make them disappear. Shaved off his eyebrows. For your eyes, we're going to use a beautiful shade of blue eyeshadow with a bit of sparkle that will help to achieve the unforgettable look conceived by famed makeup artist Pierre Laroche for Bowie's Life on Mars music video. Because Bowie's makeup was closely inspired by traditional Japanese kabuki theater, as well as his training as a mime, we're going to lighten up your complexion for a more dramatic look. Then we're going to add some blush and severe contour. We'll finish the face with a glittering gloss on top of a pink lipstick which will evoke the metallic lip colors that Bowie sometimes wore as Ziggy Stardust. Of course, this look would not be complete without Bowie's flaming red Ziggy hairdo, which was copied by thousands of young fans and became a symbol of rebellion. This look pretty much has me speechless right now. I don't know where my eyebrows are. Um, but in order to really experience what it's like to be a glam rocker, I guess I gotta jam out. So my producer got me a royalty free song and I'm gonna try to play along to it. I feel like I'm supposed to do this. film it in slow motion and make it look like I'm doing something cool. Obviously not a musician, but I still had a lot of fun. Getting to rock out in a piece of clothing that Blondie actually wore was pretty sick. The mullet with the crazy makeup and the outfit, I really feel like I captured the essence of a glam rocker. There is a lot of layers and a lot of glue on my face. 
I don't see a situation where I would ever do this in my real life. The hair is giving me a little bit of a Ronald McDonald feel, so I'm, it's not really for me. So the jumpsuit is definitely my favorite part of this look. I love cheetah print and it didn't restrict me at all when I was playing any instruments. Usually I put bronzer on my face to look tanner, so intentionally looking paler is a new concept to me. I've also never contoured with red before. I really see why people like Bowie would wear a look like this. It's super iconic, it makes you different than everyone else, but I'm not a rock star. <laughs> this is my final look for the day. I've had so much fun, but before I go, there is one last thing I have to do. Sarah, thank you so much. I think the 70s might have been my favorite decade that I've tried so far. It's awesome, and can I just say you looked amazing in all the looks. Thank you. Thank you. So I've had some time to reflect, and in general, I really vibed with every look from the 70s. My favorite was probably the bohemian look. It was loose, comfortable, and a nice blend of like warm, earthy tones, which I normally gravitate towards anyway. Big fan of the choker. I'm a 90s kid. The only part I would change would be the shoes because I almost broke my ankle, which surprisingly didn't happen when I was wearing the roller skates. Another look I loved was glam rock. I mean, I was wearing Blondie's jumpsuit, that's the closest I'll ever be to fame. However, the makeup was a little dramatic. I think I would opt to keeping my eyebrows on. I would probably do my makeup more like the casual look with like light cheeks, light lipstick, and just enough mascara to make my eyes pop. Overall, the 70s were all about individuality. So doing and wearing whatever made you feel like a badass. And I'm pretty on board with that. Anyways, thanks for watching. I gotta go figure out where to store a giant disco ball.